Hi everybody, welcome to your first lecture for our web marketing course. My name is Dr. Lou Sabina and I'm excited to be presenting this material for you in a fun and interactive way as you learn it. I want to go over basically what I think you should do to be successful while I'm lecturing and so you have an understanding of sort of why I'm presenting what I'm presenting. When I normally teach courses, I design my own PowerPoints. However, um, we're going to talk a lot in this course about the notion of disruptive technologies. The internet and web marketing is a disruptive technology, meaning that it changes constantly. This is a brand new book, it's already on its third edition, and they're already working on a fourth because the way that we market through the internet and, uh, using, and using computing services changes daily, basically. So for this course, I am relying on the instructor design PowerPoints because they are the experts in the course. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to supplement it with things that are relevant for all of you. That's where the articles come in. Every chapter, I've given you two current articles relating to the content of the chapter. I think that's important stuff that you should look at that can help you with your final project in the class. This is here to supplement and it's here to help you. Because I'm using, you know, essentially in relying on the textbook, when I lecture, it will benefit you to have the textbook in hand so that you can follow along on the graphs and diagrams. It's going to be tough to see them on a video or tough to see them on the PowerPoint, but if you have the book in hand, I'll say turn to page 22 and look at this diagram and I'll talk a little bit about it so that can help you. The other thing that I want to note, um, this is designed to be an introductory course. Um, it's an introductory course in internet marketing. It's supposed to give you exposure and sort of an idea of what it looks like and how it is. That being said, it's such a new phenomena, there's not many books that relate to internet marketing. There are only two on the market. Uh, because of that, that creates a challenge because we, you know, we're in a position where we have to use internet marketing, um, basically even though this is an introductory course, and it's, it's a complex textbook. This is going to be a tough read. So I want to make sure that I'm going over material that I think is beneficial for you and helpful to you. So to answer the question that I'm sure some of you are thinking in your mind, can I get away with the second edition of the book? Absolutely not. It is not going to help you in this course. You need the current edition. I know it's expensive, but this is a technology-based course. If it's a technology-based course, you have to use the current edition of the book. So, one of the things that our authors ask in the beginning is, are you old enough to remember life without internet access? Um, it, it's crazy to think about how the internet has evolved and, and, and changed uh, in, in whole our, um, our, 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 our life. Um, we have contact with people, some people work from home, some people communicate um, on a daily basis using Skype, using FaceTime, using Google Hangouts. Um, the internet has changed so much about how we live our life. Um, as I stated in the introductory video, um, I essentially paid for my undergraduate through DJing. Um, I did it and I purchased CDs. I would go to the stores, I would buy CDs, and spend a lot of money on, on buying CDs. Now, getting music is as simple as downloading it by you know, searching on iTunes or using other servers or other systems. Um, the internet has changed a lot. Um, and for those of you that remember being without internet access, um, it's, it's crazy to think about how reliant we are on having the internet now. So, Talking about the evolution from the internet, um, one of the things that I want to stress here, um, and it's an idea that will benefit you in all of business in general, is that basically things grew in our society through the military. Military gets access to everything first. Why do we have an internet? We have an internet because of the military. Um, the Cold War, um, if you have grandparents or parents who are old enough to remember this, basically what happened in the Cold War is that people believed that there were Russian spies that were tapping into our phones at all times. Anytime we picked up the phone and we called somebody, there were Russians that were listening to what we were saying. We think about it now, it's, it's kind of funny, but people truly believed this. So they invented a system that the Russians wouldn't have access to, which was the internet. It was a way to communicate using computers and digital signals to transmit information. Um, because the Cold War ended, it really didn't grow until the 1980s. And then we looked at the way of using the internet for more military and governmental communications. So basically, everything tied to how the internet grew was tied towards the military. 
It was big in the 1950s, and it was hidden from the public. 60s and 70s, nobody really cared about it. In the 80s, um, it took over again. So remember one thing that the internet kind of grew from military use and military access. I think it's important to note that the internet went through a boom period. Um, many, many, many businesses in the early 90s made a lot of money um, through internet acquisitions and mergers. One of the biggest ones was when AOL and Time Warner merged together. Um, Time Warner and AOL, and, and AOL came together, and AOL was the leading email server in, in the world, and we all know that's not the case anymore. But AOL and Time Warner merged together, and that caused one of the biggest busts and failures in, uh, in, in corporation history. Um, we had the growth of the internet through different search engines. Yahoo was one of the first ones in, in 1995 that was really prevalent. Um, but then the internet model started to fail um, through 2000 and 2002. And like anything in business, things reinvent themselves. Um, different ways of marketing, different ways of presenting strategy existed. I would argue the biggest ones are Google and Facebook. Um, I would assume that almost everybody in this class has a Facebook account, um, and everybody's familiar with Google. Um, Google and Facebook revolutionized how we market and how we can basically sell our products. And I think that's important. If you look at the textbook on page four, it gives you a brief history of the internet. Um, you're not going to be able to see this or see it on the PowerPoint, but I want to highlight and stress a couple of things. Um, 2003, and I'm just going to point to where this is, um, Apple launched the iTunes store. Apple was, it's strange to think of Apple the way it is now, because Apple was a commercial failure in the 1990s. People thought Apple was going to go bankrupt. And then through the use of the iPod, um, Apple grew in its popularity, and Apple is one of the world leading brands right now. I live and die, I, I live and die for Macs. I wouldn't go to any other type of computer. I think they're the best on the market. Um, but really, it was iTunes and the iPod that saved Apple. Um, YouTube came out in 2005. 2004 was when Google had Gmail, and then uh, Facebook was made available to everyone in 2006. Um, one of the things that I would like you to do as a part of this class is if you've not seen the movie The Social Network, um, it's a fantastic movie. And if you really want to see how Facebook grew and how you can use Facebook for marketing purposes, it's a great movie that you can look at. So another thing that our textbook will go into is the Saber Holdings timeline. This is provided on page seven. This is basically showing you um, how strategies changed to market in different ways. This is worth a read. Um, you can look specifically at this from uh, a travel perspective. If you want to look at it, um, it it'll show you how basically one, one network turned into a product, to an enterprise, to a lot of different brands. So we have to ask the question, what does this notion of bust and return say about internet business models? Well, um, you have to strike well, you have to strike while you can. You have to get in, you have to be productive, and you have to do something that's unique, innovative, that nobody else is doing, and offer a unique product and service. We live in a market right now where um, there is not much in terms of loyalty to, to different stores and businesses. People are searching for the cheapest price, and you go where you can find the cheapest price. So you have to offer service that's unique, available, and affordable to people. So one of the other things that you need to know for this course is this notion of Web 2.0. Um, Web 2.0 is covered in the textbook on pages seven and eight. Um, I give you a list of some of the things uh, that are part of uh, that are part of Web 2.0. You can look at this and uh, and you can expand and we'll expand upon this. Um, the one thing that I want to stress about this is Web 2.0 is one of the big ideas of this class. When we look at the other chapters, we're going to look at all these individually. So for me to cover them now doesn't really make sense, because we're going to cover all these. We're going to look at apps. We're going to look at ways that collective intelligence is used, um, how groups can use synergy in order to come together to create uh, co-developer products. We're going to look at this later on in the course, but just have an idea that it's introduced here. Um, we're asking what you know Web 3.0 is supposed to be. Web 3.0 is, is going to be more, more of open communication, data transfer, everything tied to your location, where, you're, where you are, what you can access. Um, basically, you'll be getting suggestions on what you can do based on where you are and where you're at. Everything will be presented to you in real time, and this is already happening. 
Um, those of you that use your phones for, um, for suggestions on things, you can simply hit a button and it'll use your geolocation and it'll tell you what's nearby. Um, but this is coming and this is what you're going to be using for marketing soon. So, social business technology um, is, is it, it's important. It's important to see how business has changed over the last really 10 years. Um, we have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of collaboration and productivity now in, in communication with customers, but it's in different forms. It's through email, it's through live chats. Um, less is given to uh, customer support, different, you know, time need for meetings or travels because we can interface with people digitally and, and it's effective now. So it's important to note that when you're thinking of something that can help increase your business, you want to look at this stuff and not this stuff. So another brand and another idea is presented on uh, page 10 of your textbook. This shows you the top 20 most valuable global brands. Um, notice too that the year is 2010. Um, most of the times, book chapters and authors will present statistics in the form of uh, in, 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 in the form of uh, 2010 at the end of every decade, 2000, 2010, 2020, because it's the end of the census report. Um, so that's kind of showing you where we were at as of 2010. Um, notice what our big companies are. We're looking at Google, IBM, Apple, Apple Microsoft, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Mar Marlboro, our six biggest brands um, in, in, in the world. I, I think that's huge and I think that's important to note. Um, I, I was, when I was looking at this, I was intrigued that Amazon was ranked as low as it was. It's only 15. I would bet that now Amazon is closer to the top of that list. Um, but this evolves and it changes all the time. So the internet marketing paradigm, um, this is available on page 11. Um, the key idea that I want you to focus on is this notion of customer acquisition, customer conversion, customer retention, and customer value growth. That's the circle that's in the center of this. When you're designing your web pages and blogs for this course, that's what I want you to focus on and that's what I want you to think about. So, this chart provides you some of the um, some of the examples of what you need to be doing in, in order to increase all of those four ideas. One of the things that I want to stress that makes people more likely to purchase off of you in today's environment is this notion of direct response. Um, customer service and support is is now we're at a point where it's it's almost it's instantaneous that you can get feedback or get a solution resolved, whether it's through email, through a chat, or through a phone. People are more likely to be supportive of your brand and your idea if you can provide them with a direct response and it's quick and it's efficient. So the internet infrastructure stack, this is provided on page 13 of the textbook. Um, this is just giving you an idea of sort of um, how telecommunications works. Um, we're not really going to cover this that much in depth in this course. One of the things that I'm more concerned about is the notion of cloud computing, which is something we're going to talk about briefly. So, basically what, what cloud computing is, this, this enables you to have a certain, amount of, uh, a certain amount of space that you have access to um, that's either public or private, um, and it gives you space and, and fee that you can provide, and it's a service fee. Um, you don't have to maintain any software or hardware. Everything is done and it's saved to a massive database and it's in the cloud. Um, this costs money. The more money and more, and more data you have, the more you're going to spend on this. Um, but you, have the, you don't have to maintain hardware and software because of it. Different companies and different services provide this. If you're fortunate enough to grow a business, this is something that could benefit you in the future. Page 15 gives you an example of what client services in the cloud look like and what they can do for you. And you're certainly willing to, uh, you're certainly able to look at this and see if this can benefit you at all when you're designing your web page. So consumers benefit. Um, I would argue, you know, they give a list, our publishers give a list of these things. Um, I would argue that the one that they list last is probably the most important. Um, if you use cloud computing, you're not going to lose material because you can back up files online and you have a storage space that's easy to that, that's easy to access. Imagine if something happened to your iTunes folder and you lost all of your music. 
what would happen to you? What would you have to do? You would have to go to the Apple Store to have them recover it, or you could save it in the cloud and you could back up all the files and have them accessed online. Um, I think this is probably one of the biggest ways that consumers benefit. Um, storing photos and videos, um, yes, you can certainly do that, but um, I find that people tend to use services like Facebook and, and YouTube to store their videos. Look at how we're accessing our videos for this course. Um, I'm giving you a direct download link, plus I'm linking you to YouTube. I'm backing them up on my computer, but you're accessing it through YouTube. Um, Google Docs is probably one of the leading document ways that we do this cloud computing concept now, so that's something that you might be seeing more of in the future as well. So we're going to talk about who uses the internet. Um, the internet is approaching saturation, meaning that if countries are developing, people are using it. Um, developing, developing countries, it's, it's growing, it's having increased access. Most people care now, right now, about the speed and how quickly they can access the internet. Um, using your cell phone, um, different networks, a 2G, 3G, 4G network, that makes a difference as well because speed is what matters right now. Um, we're looking more that people care about mobile access than they do about desktop access. People want more access to Wi-Fi than they care about using a desktop computer or even a laptop. So this is a change in really in the development of the internet. Um, I want to note the size of the internet by region. Um, Asia is dominating the market. This is available on page 18 in the textbook, but you'll notice that we're trailing behind Europe and Asia in terms of our users, but it's also a population thing as well. So mobile growth worldwide, um, notice, notice basically that it, we're looking at the United Kingdom in the ways that their wireless internet users are growing. This is found on page 18 and 19 of the textbook, but we're seeing that um, the, majority of, the majority of people that are using a mobile phone are men. Um, and using laptop via wireless connection. Um, but we still have about 54% of people as of 2010 that aren't using any of these devices. Once again, you know, this, it's not 2010 anymore, but this has changed and this has certainly evolved. So this, I think, is important for you. This is on page 20. It's something you might want to consider in your marketing plan. Notice the use of people that are using the internet and their household income. If people are making $75,000 or more, 96% of them are likely to use the internet. Therefore, if you're using a business and you're designing a business model, you need to target the people that have money. They're the ones that are using the internet. They're the ones that are going to be able to. Um, they're, they're the ones that are going to be able to spend money and use your product and services. Um, we have a population of people that are 65 and over. Only 46% of the people are using computers. Um, one of the things that business researchers say, and it's very blunt, is that as those people eventually die off, more people will use the internet. And that's just the way that it is. Um, rural has less access than urban and suburban, and that's basically because there are some areas that just can't get internet access, and that happens. And when that occurs, um, I think you know we're working on expanding that, but that's something that you need to consider. People in rural areas, they still need to rely on traditional advertising like radio and newspaper, um, in order to reach them as potential clients. So what are people using the internet for? And this is available on page 21 in the textbook. Um, the majority of people use the internet for email. Um, that's, you know, that's what people are using it for. Um, social, networkings or, uh, social networking sites have grown exponentially from you know, 2005 to today. They're still growing, but the majority of people use the internet for email and news. So that being said, how do you market to people? Well, you find a way to do it through email and through news servers. Um, and social networking is going to be your more trending and growing method of marketing. So we have the digital lifestyle um, perspective. This is something you might want to look at as well. This is on page 22 of the textbook. Um, you can see people and why they use the internet and, and for what purpose they use it for. If you can find a way to hit all six of these domains when you're designing your website and designing your product, this is going to be a very effective way that you can market to a large, large range of people. So most people rely um, to discover new products on search engines. Um, it is leading uh, of, uh, of everything. Um, think about it. Um, search engines are, if you want something and you're looking for a service or a product, you're probably going to go to a search engine in order to look for it. Um, 
that's growing where other forms are being used, like email, um, access to things like Amazon, um, social networking sites that are using uh, you know, real-time marketing. But the fact that people are using 